Welcome to episode 86 of the Organizations Win Championships podcast covering your Chicago Bulls. I'm Dan Bernstein. That's Jason Bernstein, along with Spencer Ray, our producer at Odyssey 2400 Sports. This is the last time Dingus is going to be sitting next to me. Because for the future, it's not like I'll never be right, sitting right, right. next to you recording a podcast. It's just for at least the next couple of months, right? Well, when are you home next? I don't know. He's we're early taking... October for fall break, so maybe we can record then and then start, Thanksgiving. Start of the season. Yeah, because we're gonna have to time Ooh. It for like we have a special guest who's already made a commitment mm-hmm. who we said closer to the season. It's gonna be awesome. We're looking forward to it. No, we've spoiled it in in, in a past episode. I, I don't know if we have or not. I we forgot. Have. I forgot. So Jason is going down to New Orleans and headed to Tulane University, where you will watch a lot of bad basketball going to be better than what i was watching last year in that, Pennsylvania. no doubt it's going to be i'll tell you that right now it'll be better than patriot league ball there's no question and we haven't had a ton of maybe i'll maybe i'll talk to penny hardaway when memphis comes sure comes in yeah and... why not go to his press conference or or just put in a request for the sid and get a you know i'm sure that, get a credential and definitely oh yeah i'll be get a credential from you know get an odyssey credential and see if you do it that way i don't know i can probably do it through the school if they're playing Memphis, and and we'll we'll see what happens. All right, well, figure it out. So we are doing a mailbag today. We have solicited some questions from you via Twitter. Did you have some via Instagram? No, someone just sent me a reel of Derek Rose highlights, and I was like, okay, thanks, man. (laughs) That's not a question. No. Uh, (laughs) So we are going to answer some of those. We're going to do the showdown today as well. I mean, I can double check, but I I don't Yeah, go ahead and double check. And then we'll put out the crowd showdown question and congratulate last week's winner. It was a really hard one last week, but we did get a winner so let's hit the mailbag shall we sure all right so we will get started and the first question that i got was from matt who said do the bulls need to sign another big Ugh. that's that's a really good question because i mean obviously i think jalen smith is going to have a huge role this year i think a lot of it is going to depend on what they're going to do with williams what they're going to do with buzelis what they're going to do with phillips because i feel like if if we're considering i mean basketball is so positionless so if we're considering the quote-unquote four as a big man we'll see what happens there obviously sonogo is going to be on a two-way but I'm, but i'm assuming we're saying for genuine nba minutes like Vooch is still Vooch is still on the team and he's going to he's going to play. That so that's the thing. The forwards so, right now, let's do the forwards who are locks on this roster. Forwards is Vooch a forward? No. Big bigs. Okay, Vooch. I'd say Vooch and Jalen Smith 100%. Buzelis, yeah, Williams, Patrick Williams. That's four. And then we're counting Julian Phillips as a Forward, he's a forward wing. I don't know what he is. And then the choices come down to: Are you going to roster Henry Drell? Are you going to re-sign Javante Green? That's always on the table. I guess that's true. And he is a big, even though he is not big. He's a big. I'm taking that jersey with me. Well, hell yeah, you are. And all my all my other ones too. And no one is going to know who Green. Oh yeah, do you have a jersey update? Did you? Oh, Philly Ben Simmons. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so you have the Philly. It's the special Philly, though, right? Yeah. It's just like their red alternate Philly one. Ben yeah. Simmons. Okay. Yeah. So the with... freaking Ben Simmons, man. What a fall off. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> God. With the departure of Drummond, that would. He's replaced by Jalen Smith as your primary that's backup. That's an upgrade. I'm center. sorry, but that's an upgrade. And our bet, remember, what, what were 15 the 15 and 10, right? 15 and 8. 8, not 10. 15 and 8. 15 and 8. And I lampooned him, if you remember in the previous episode, when he this said... This the previous episode. This on a it. previous episode, not said, the. Not you the said immediately the. previous. You said the. You said the. I said a. No, you said the. I said a. I used the Spencer, indefinite article. Article. Spencer, did he say the or a? So you're going to make him go I, back and listen? No, I'm I'm just seeing if if, if he heard that, and I, I want to... S- Damn it. Don't, I, ah! See, be, be, be. Ow, quit. I didn't even touch you. You were about to. You, was, you thought about it. You thought about doing something. You were gonna lick my face. No, I wasn't. Ew. That's like that would be like licking a toad without the hallucinogenic high. Or maybe there is. What one. do you know about maybe, that? Maybe I can try. I don't know. Who knows? What I mean, do you know about licking toads? <laughs> you 
<laughs> Toad liquor. <laughs> well, I mean, it's supposed to, it's supposed to work, but it can also kill you. So you shouldn't do that. When you go off to college, and you're going to be in the swamp, no licking toads. What about licking alligators? <laughs> That's not what I thought you were about to say. What were you saying? Toes? What? No, no. Tell me. No. Tell me. No. Tell me. Whisper no. it. Whisper it. That, that's you just start... not creative at all. But, but that's... I wasn't going to say it. That's what I thought you were going to say when you started with alligators. I was like, well, I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to kink shame. Uh, so what, what the hell is wrong with you? I don't know. I'm, I'm a little uh, punchy just because of everything that's going on in our lives right now. We got a lot, we got a lot going on. And you haven't packed a thing. This guy hasn't packed a thing. We leave the house at 7.30 in the morning. He has not packed an iota yet. Because you're a schmuck. Okay. Not one thing. Wait, yeah, not uh, just, one Because I was thing. taking care of my mental health and getting a haircut. That's that's. I'm getting shamed for it. Well, mental health. Yeah. And hair. It, hair is part of my mental health. What time did you wake up? Huh? What time did you get out of bed? So I was up at 11. I had a meeting with my psychiatrist, and then I fell back to sleep. Ah, good planning. For an hour, and I got up at 1. Okay, awesome. Well planned. Uh, yes, I think the Bulls probably need to add Yeah, what the hell are we somebody. doing, you like, weirdo? Adding another big, for at least for practice purposes, I would not mind them having another body. Maybe it's Drell. Maybe it's Sonogo. Maybe you go in-house, because there's just, you, you might as well oh, no, out. Well, he's not a big. No, he's a... Thing. He's a bad, I think, is what he is. <laughs> he's, a, he's a bad. Unfortunately. Uh, this is a good question from DB. Will the Bulls move towards shooting more threes? Chicago is near the bottom of the league in three points attempted, three pointers attempted. And uh, the answer to that is unquestionably yes. They should. They and need to. I asked, shoot. I asked AK directly. I asked him directly, and he, the way he put it was, too often they were starting games down eight nothing, because they're because teams would score eight more points per game threes. That they were yeah, they'll shoot they'll shoot more. Uh, we just still don't know what's going on with Zach and what his situation is. Io got better at shooting last year. We'll see what Buzelis can do when he gets some minutes. I don't care if they miss more threes. I do think they need to take a more representative amount of if threes. If they take double the amount of threes and shoot a lower percentage, who cares? Because they'll be scoring more points. Ah, and that is going to be a factor in my showdown question. Oh, boy. Interesting how you put that. But, yes, it's that's probably true. going to be about Stephen Curry. It's not. Oh, okay. It's not. That was ridiculous. Yes, that was it. That was I think we need that, to take a moment to talk about Steph Curry and the men's Olympic team. That was. We're doing a mailbag. So. Back my mailbag, man. But so th they are going to shoot more threes. That is a goal. They know it. They know it. They know it. They absolutely are completely aware of the dearth of threes and they want it corrected. Now, they may, they with Giddy, I don't know what you're getting. I don't know if you're getting what has he been, 32, 33 percent? That's got to be better. He's got to be closer to 38, 40 percent. To 40 is a little high. You now, look. If Caruso can shoot 40, Giddy can shoot 40. Caruso has been a better shooter than Giddy. Peter Patton will work his magic, and he will make him better. I don't know. Your breath is, again, really terrible. Well, um, is it the IPA? Drinking on the job, man. That's, that's foul. Why? Although for you, I feel like you you might. I'm not. I'm not operating might, a might, forklift. Might be easier to. I'm not a pilot. You, it might be easier to listen to if you're if you're not as annoying. Well, because I, you're. Well, the audience should always be drinking when they listen to me. That's absolutely recommended. That Don't, makes it all yeah, more but interesting. You, you're and also on the radio, so if they're driving, that's, I, well, then they, that's then they should be uh, taking an Uber. But absolutely, it makes everything funnier and more interesting. I get texts like that sometimes during a show where someone's like, I didn't used to like this show, but I'm high off my ass, and now I think I get it. I was like, no. No, that's not really designed. You haven't unscrambled some sort of secret code. Uh, Maybe he has. I don't think so. Here's a question from Anytime. Anytime wants to know, 
which international players made a case to be picked up by the NBA All right, after their 24 Olympics performance? I don't know how to say his name, but Francis Power Forward, Gershon Yabasele. The, yeah, he was already in the league. I know, but he's not anymore. I think I think he was on the Celtics for two years. He was bad. Maybe he got better. I think he deserves some kind of a shot because he's just really active. Um, and I think he's a little bit old school because he's undersized, not a great shooter. Mm hmm. Kind of uh, kind of reminds me a little bit, not not quite as maybe like an older Kenneth Fareed, like when his NBA time was coming hmm. to an end. That's an interesting comp. And the, 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 he's more aggressive than that, though. He's he he he's he Kenneth is, Fareed's nickname was the Manimal. Yeah, but, huh? he's pretty damn aggressive. I, I just think that that's his comp, and I it was somebody on South Sudan that I really liked that I also thought made a case to be on a. A, you know, at least like an exhibit 10 or something playing the preseason. What's an exhibit 10? I don't know. It's just a tr trashy contract, I think. So it's not even a two way. It's just a, like, a, so here's, here's what I oh, find fascinating second. about this whole thing. If I asked you how many Olympic participants were current or former NBA players, do you think you could get it within plus or minus Wait, five? Wait, say that again. How I'm... many? How many 2024 men's Olympic participants were current or former NBA players? Actual play, had just play, a number played an NBA game. Give me a number plus or minus five. How confident are you that you could get it in that window? Without knowing how many total players played in the Olympics, and oh, I'm not confident at all. I would say. 38 81 wow there were 81 current or former players by a by multiples an all-time record and the reason i mention that is to illustrate the fact that there was a time and also the guy that i was saying was nuni Amot. nuni Amot. and anun was his name he oh. played for the westchester knicks which is their g league affiliate for a little while six nine active forward I, I I like I liked him a little bit. Played at Baylor. There was a time where there were exotic international players, and this idea of ooh, everyone's coming from faraway lands. Now everyone's good from faraway lands. Well, and they're all, and our world is tiny. And the moment these guys are fourteen, there's video of them, and they're recruited, and they're playing, and they're playing professionally at young ages. There just aren't any secrets anymore. So I think it, that that question, the nothing against it, but the question itself is is almost anachronistic. Of oh somebody, my God, your breath smells like a what? wet dog. It's probably this stuff. It smells Ugh. like a, wait. It smells like a wet dog's breath. No, your like breath a... smells like a wet dog. Mm. It must be this. It's not exactly a, a good. Uh, advertisement for it though, so I'm not going to say any names because that's wet. It. They're, they're probably beer. probably not going to lead with that with wet wet dog IPA. Although I wouldn't. No, that that, that sounds like an IPA name. I know it does, but they because somebody's probably on shrooms or something it was just like, what if we named an IPA called Wet Dog and it tastes like wet no. dog? Uh, from what I know about about local brewmasters, none of them would ever touch any substances. So yeah, they would never come up with anything like that because it's just anathema to the brewing community. <sighs> Yikes. What? Uh, I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm being deeply sarcastic. How do you know that everybody's on I didn't acid? say I didn't say, I didn't say everybody. <laughs> Have you seen some of the label designs out there? They're a little funky. Have you seen like Half Acre with the owl with the octopus tentacles? Hey, don't be talking about Half Acre. No, they have the that. coolest labels by far. They have a guy who just does labels. He sits at a. They, they, they have, probably pay him to do drugs. They, <laughs> and they, they, and they've had raw things. They've had no. Seriously, they've named their beers after seeing his labels, instead of the other way around. Oh, so he was definitely tripping balls. I don't know that, and you can't say that. Well, I'm just, just I'm just bringing that up. So, where were which question was this? Oh, international players. It, it everybody knows who everybody is. There are no secrets, and most of these guys, are like, oh, who's that guy with a name I can't pronounce? Was probably in the NBA, as was the case with uh, Yabusele. 
Yeah, and Emote was on the next G League team. Right. So there isn't anybody who just emerging right. from somewhere unseen. But, dude, but and I, th- I think both of those guys could play in the preseason and deserve like some kind of a shot. The only thing is that the international game and even the rules are going to be a lot are a lot different. So you never know how they'll fare in NBA ball. And that is my grandmother calling me. But right now, don't answer it answer. now. Don't answer it for grandma. Hey, this question be nice. from Vince. Is when and how did you get started on fishing? Oh God, he's going to be here for ten years. I'm going to go to bed. No, that's an easy one. Uh, When I was very, very, very young, as anything else, if your parents are into it, my my dad loved fishing. His father, his grandfather, liked it, and I went to overnight camp for eight weeks up in Hayward, Wisconsin, at North Star Camp at a very not a very young age. It was nine, turning ten. And it's it, a, an incredible chain of class A musky waters there filled with every other game fish known to man. And I was spoiled by the fact that the, the fishing was so good up there for so long. But yeah, those were my summers. It was my favorite thing to do. And I, I learned from the fishing counselors at camp until I became one and paid it forward when I was teaching fishing. There, you can wake up. Okay, great. There, And then I've, I've just, I, I really enjoy it. I love it. So that's going to do it for the OWC mailbag. And I'm glad that leaves us time for our showdown, which, as you know, now involves the crowd question. And also Steph Curry. Oh, yeah. I mean... Last week's crowd question was a difficult one. And it was to name the two former Bulls who rank in the top 10 in U.S. Olympic men's basketball history for scoring average in a single Olympic Games. Number five and number nine. Took a while. There were a lot of interesting wrong guesses. But number five was indeed Michael Jordan. And he did it. At the outset of his career in the summer of 1984 at the Los Angeles Games. The other was in 1976 in Montreal, where Bulls first round pick Scott May was coming off of one of the greatest college seasons in history. I think that was the undefeated Indiana team with uh, Kent Benson. And what about Ben Kenson? No, Kent Benson. You know who Kent Benson is? Yeah. Have you ever seen the video of Kareem getting punched in the balls and he punches the guy right in the face? No. You've never seen that video? No. Seriously? No, we'll watch it after. Oh, dude. I can't believe you haven't seen that. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar takes an, uh, a shot to the nuts from Kent Benson. And Kareem... He, he, oh, he, God, your he, breath is so bad. Sorry, it's probably this stuff. Then put it down! Mm-mm. Ugh. You have some of them. We're even. No, yeah. I'm good. Okay. And if so it smells anything like your breath. Why the frick would I want to drink so it? Kareem takes a shot to the nuts. Here. And he looks at him like, what did you just do, man? And as they're running back down the floor, Kareem hauls off and just decks him. <laughs> just lays him out <laughs> like nothing. Like, what are you? Like his response is like, now I've got to punch you in the face. And he did. And it was great. Uh, so it was Michael Jordan and Scott May. The winner, it was Twitter handle Just a Beacho. So congratulations, Just a Beacho. You are the winner mm-hmm. of the crowd challenge on the OWC showdown. Now, right. now are we ready? Sure. All right, Don't I'm- go back here. Why are you looking at CVS? Well, I wasn't. I was just, I had to look in the thing. It's all good. Um, All right. Are you going first? I'll go first. Are you aware of the statistic true shooting percentage? Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what it means. True shooting percentage is a calculation of field goals and free throws. Okay. Factoring in three pointers. So it's basically any time you shoot the ball, what the value is. Is and there it's 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 not an easy calculation, but right. it, it basically says it, re- it just includes free throws in field goal percentage. 
it does and it and it and it essentially accounts for the extra value of threes. Okay. I have the top 10 all-time Chicago Bulls in true shooting percentage. Is there a limit to how long they played? I do think there is a minimum. It's not, it's, I don't think it's a very high minimum. Are there what, like some one season guys, you know, even a few N- games? No, there's no one season guys. There's no few games guys. These are all multiple season all guys, right. but the list is wild. Okay. The only hint I will give you is that five of the 10 were on the roster last year. Kobe White? No. Zach Levine? Seven. Damar? Nine. Last year. Andre Drummond? Ten. Vooch? No. Ooh, no. Yeah. Yeah. That guy like, leads the league and missed bunnies. Patrick Williams? Nope. Just thought because he makes a lot of threes. Last Javante. Number one all time yeah. in Chicago Bulls history in true shooting percentage. That's my guy. Is, is, this is over his career. And Io number Io is number okay. eight. Okay, so I got all five from you. Got, you got seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Javante Green's number one. Okay. I'll take that. Okay. And now now just let me go. Jordan. Nope. Pippen. No. Rose. No. Luol Dang. No. John Salmons. No. Brad Miller. No. Kyle Korver. No. Taj Gibson. No. Carlos Boozer. No. Joaquin Noah. No. Anybody from that like era type thing? Uh, yes. One. Nate Robinson. Kind of from that era? No. Ronnie Brewer. No. He was. He was been. He's been mentioned in a recent episode. Oh, and one God. was just with the team. Thaddeus Young. No. C.J. Watson. Randy Watson. No. This is a weird list. One guy you've never heard of. Who? Let's go. Number six, Steve Johnson. Okay. From yeah. Oregon State. No, you never heard of him. <sighs> Artist Gilmore. Yes, number two. Artist Gilmore is number Nate two. Nate Thurmond? No, not a, not a bad guess. Bob Love. No. Sloan. No, none uh, of the no, none, none of the none of the jerseys. old classics. Kendall Gill. Nope. Stacy King. Nope. Bill Wennington. Longley. Nope. Anybody from that era? Yes. Kukosh. No. Steve Kerr. Yes. Kerr is three. Javante Green, Artis Gilmore, and Steve Kerr. So, so I've, there's, I there's need you three need more. four and five. No, I gave you Steve Johnson. Oh, yeah. So you need four and five. Four played last year, and five was in the Olympics. Played last year for the Bulls? No. But, but played the year before year. he played for the Bulls. And and five was in the Olympics. It's not going to be an American, obviously. Was in the Carly Jones? Nope. Okay, because I, I know this was in... a previous question. I'm, I was shocked to see his name on this because he's terrible. It's not going to be Scott May. No. Okay. I don't know. He was in the Olympics this yeah. year. I know, but I'm saying in general. In the Olympic, okay, let me. And the other guy was the uh, one part of the crowd. Is he in? Is, is the guy that played in the Olympics this year still in the league? No. Oh, he's not. Canada? Nope. Europe? Somewhere? No. In Europe. Asia? No. Let's see if Jason knows his continents. Africa? No. South America? Yes. Played in the Olympics. Felicio. Cristiano Felicio is six. <laughs> this, I'm telling you, this list is so weird. And number four was a recent bull who played in last year's finals. So it's either Jones. Derek Jones Jr. Cornette or Gaffer. So Derek. Javante, what the? F- I don't, I don't I, know. Pardon my French, <laughs> but what the fuck is that? I don't know. What does this tell you about true shooting percentage? Javante Green, 641. Tells Art- me Javante Green is the greatest player in Bulls history. <laughs> Artis Gilmore, 631. I didn't even think that was a debate. Steve Kerr, Derek Jones Jr., Cristiano Felicio, Steve Johnson, Zach Levine, Io DeSumo, DeMar DeRozan, and Andre Drummond. So yeah. whatever you can make out of that, more power to you. 
All right, so I have a Bulls themed question, but it is also specific to New Orleans. Oh, look at you. So my question for you is there have been three players okay. that have played at least 100 games with both the Bulls and the Pelicans slash Hornets. Ooh, I thought you were silly guys who went to LSU and I was going to just go like Tyrus Thomas. No, no. Um, three. Three Bulls. Three Bulls Pelicans. But had to play at least 100 games. So somebody like Lonzo, Lonzo. Ha- he hasn't. He played 35 games with the Bulls. Ooh. So he's not on, uh, and you can't say Jimmer for debt because he only played eight with the Bulls. You know what I mean? So it has. They have to play at. Le- they had to have played at least one hundred games with each team, and but it does. Could, and could I they w- have been New Orleans Hornets? I was just about to say yes. New Orleans Hornets. It, it, it but they weren't until recently, so it's not like it's going to be a super oh old my list. God, this is hard. This is hard. I don't even know where to begin. Because my first... you can ask yes and no questions. Anybody currently on the Bulls? Currently on the Bulls, no. Anybody who played last year with the Bulls? No. Anybody from the Derrick Rose era? Yeah, two. Well, one for sure. I don't know. It's like like I would Is say it Miritich. Early- no, you're right there though. Good guess, but no, because he didn't. Pl- he played like 80 games with New Orleans. Okay, because I knew Miritich played. Yeah, with him. That's a, but he did not play 100. I, he, or, I think key, it was 60. You're killing me. I thought I had it for sure. Nope. It wasn't Vlad Rad. No, he didn't play enough. No. I, I I'm gonna need hints. So I can't. Oh no. What? Just say it. No. What were you gonna say? Forget it. No, no, because you 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 never know. Or was it Taj? No, it wasn't Taj. He okay. never played New Orleans. That's what I thought. Okay, that's why I said no. So this is this is hints? a great question. Yeah, hints. Two big men, one shooting guard slash wing ish. Two big men, and all played for the Bulls. The, the all played for the Bulls after the year, uh, uh, definitely like oh five. But uh, but two two of the other but the that's only one player. The other two guys played in the er- early and mid twenty tens. I don't know if they crossed over at all. I think they probably did, but not for that long. Any name mentioned on this show? No. I, I, I don't. I don't even. PJ Brown? No, good guess. God Didn't play enough games. Damn it! I made this hard. Yeah, you did. Like I thought, Miritich and PJ Brown would both be automatics. God. PJ Brown only played one season with the Bulls, maybe, so he played seventy-two games. Maybe, with the Bulls. maybe he played eighty games that year. I don't remember. No, I said a hundred. Oh, only two I, guys. I am, I am. If I if I can't so get one it with of Miritis or PJ Brown. So one of them started playing with the Bulls in 2011, and and started playing with the Pels in 2015. One of them started playing with in the Bulls actually in 02. Played from with the Bulls from 02 to 06, and was in New Orleans from Sit up. and was in New Orleans from 07 to 09. That that, see, but that, that doesn't do much for me. I need to know. And then something. the last one played for the Bulls in 2015, 2016, and played with the Pelicans from 2017 to 2020. So relatively recent. Garrett Temple? No, it didn't play enough games. Okay, but that's three crossover guys that I got. Mm-hmm. I thought Garrett Temple was a good guess. You know what? There's actually a name I forgot on here. So let me add that, me. and you haven't gotten it. Started playing with the Bulls in 04, played with the Bulls from 04 to 2010, played with the... From 04 to 2010? No, not 2010. I think, play, started playing with the right, Bulls in 04, right. started playing with the Pelicans in 2007. Guard. I, I I don't know. All right, you ready? Yes. Each one more. Okay. Omer Ashik. I thought you were going to get oh. him. Oh. This one, this is the one you should have gotten, a hundred percent. Tyson Chandler, that you should have gotten. Yeah, I should have gotten him. And then the other guy that I just added was Gennaro Pargo. That was really hard. And really See, good. That would have been good for the. 
I didn't want to do that because it would have been too personal and weird because you can do that with any team, but I have All a right. connection because of New Orleans. So let's do the crowd question. And this one is also pretty hard. So they're the the United States uh, basketball team just beat France, both the women's and men's, but this is about the men's team, beat France in the gold medal game. Mm-hmm. And in French national basketball history, there's only one player that has their number retired for the French national team. Who is it and what number? That is the question. I think I may know it. Whisper it. No, we're too close to the mic. Okay. No, I'll, 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 okay, whatever. I'll ask you after. So that's going to do it for episode 86. Like, subscribe. Down, what else do we say? Download. Like, subscribe. And rate. And, and, and spam this guy on Twitter saying, get a breath mint. <laughs> All right. Next time we convene this group, Jason will be elsewhere and we will have and he won't be next to me on the couch. So this ow, ow, last time I could do that. Ow, that hurt. Too bad.